Hello, hello, hello. Friday afternoon at four o'clock, Karen Frankel with you once again to get you all drawing and by this stage, it is definitely keep you all drawing. This subject has uh, taken people's interest. So I'm delighted to be um, bringing it to you. I'm going to give you lots of information. Um, so not so much a drawing demo, although I will be showing you how these pens work, what to do with them. Drawing with pen is generally something we do um, with fairly um, quick sketches. Um, and as I was saying that, I was realizing that it's something I use for fairly quick sketches, but there are actually many, many artists out there who use these um, beautiful pens for um, large and elaborate work that actually takes quite a while. So um, they are simply just another um, um, drawing tool. The main difference in the pens that you will find is some are waterproof and some are not. And again, depending on what you want to do, one is better than the other. Generally speaking, I try to purchase waterproof pens and you will know that a pen is waterproof because it says so. So this says, I know you can't read it from there, water and fade proof pigment ink. If it doesn't say that anywhere on the pen, it is likely, not, not necessarily, but you can't rely on the fact that it is actually permanent. So these Artline pens, which are very, very common um, in newsagents, in stationery stores, these ones are not waterproof. Why does it matter? Very often when people are working with uh, um, pens, they may add a color to it. So you'll do your drawing. You may choose um, a watercolor wash or you may choose a, um, uh, I'm just grabbing a colored pencil here. Or you may choose um, a watercolor pencil that you actually want to add a wash to. So I'm just using quickly a water brush to take some color. And you might want to put a color over the top there. So if it's waterproof, you can add color without fear of, or a wash without fear of that line bleeding. Okay. However, sometimes you actually can get quite a nice little um, feel to something without worrying about color. And I'm now using the Artline pen. Let's say I'm drawing a tiny little sketch here. Or I'm drawing a, sitting in a, in a cafe and I'm drawing the building at the side. Don't know what made me think there was a cafe with a with a house next door, but nonetheless, there's my cute little drawing. Um, I'm going to get rid of the colour that was on there because I don't want you to confuse the colour that I had on there. So I'm just going to paint there so you can tell that it is actually just water. And look what happens when I wet that pen and I get tiny little bits of um, of shading. Now I don't know how carefully you can see that um, but that's what happens and it might even continue to happen as this water dries the pen work will bleed into that wet and it will continue getting darker and darker. Not, not madly dark. So if I color in the center there, you can see there were more lines for me to take the color off. And if I put, just wet the edges there, I'm getting a nice little subtlety 
of those petals. That's one of the main differences with pens, with sketching pens, is that ones, uh, most of them are waterproof, but some of them are not. And if it doesn't say waterproof, you can assume that it isn't. Um, now, um, on the subject of not saying it's waterproof, that's an ultra fine point Sharpie, and it does say permanent marker. Now, when it comes to um, Sharpies, what they usually mean when they say permanent marker is that you can draw on the plastic without it balling up, and once it's dry, it doesn't move. So that's generally what Sharpie, anyway, mean by um, permanent. But I'm going to test to see if it's waterproof as well. So I'm going to draw on my paper there. Occasionally you will have a waterproof pen and you'll put a mark and if you put water on too soon before it's dry that will bleed a little bit. But when I say too soon I'm only really talking about a minute. So let's see if permanent as far as the Sharpie pen is concerned means waterproof. And it does indeed mean waterproof because that is not moving, it's not budging. So you might find that the word permanent also means waterproof. Okay, so those are your main differences between um, different pens, but there are a lot of other differences. Those are just the, the best ones. Um, sorry, the biggest difference. Which are best to buy? If you know that you'd like to put color on at some stage after you've drawn, then the best one to buy is a waterproof. If you think you might put color on, but you're not sure, then buy a waterproof one. However, sometimes, even when you've forgotten, so I've, I've seen lots of work and people have just grabbed a pen and they can't remember if it's a waterproof one or not, and they've painted with, they've drawn with it, and they've come with their color afterwards, and the color has mingled with the tone of the brush, um, of the, the, the bleeding pen, and it hasn't really affected it. So don't worry overly much about that. You can, of course, put color down first, and then it doesn't matter whether your pen is waterproof or not. So those are your two um, major categories. What other differences are there? Well, of course, you um, the most obvious um, pen is just your bog standard ballpoint pen. And you'll probably know from all the different ballpoint pens that are available, even they have differences in quality. So some are scratchy, some are thin, some are um, smooth and easy to write with, all of those sorts of things. Now, you can draw with a ballpoint pen. Don't feel that you have to have a special drawing pen to be able to draw with it. Okay, so it's a little bit rougher. It's a little bit, um, you know, getting the ink down on your page isn't quite as easy as a deliberate sketching pen, but you can make all the marks you need and a little anecdote, my late father, um, long before graphic pens became the norm, he used to draw with a ballpoint pen all the time. And um, a few years ago, or however many years ago, 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, um, the quality of the ballpoint pens wasn't quite as good as it is now, generally. And there used to be a little bit of ink that would form on top of now why are they that's why you're not seeing it i wasn't showing it under the camera there used to be a little bit of ink balling up on that tip and it used to leave little smudge marks and things on the paper i can't do it now because this is a better quality pen but he didn't mind those lumps of ink because he used to smudge it with his finger and that's actually managed to smudge just a smidge So ballpoint pens are fantastic to draw with. 
although they're a little bit harder. Okay, very easy to carry. You can click that nib shut so that they're in your bag wherever and they're not going to mess things up. So all those, and they're not going to dry out. So there's advantages to using ballpoint pens. You've pretty much always got one with you. Okay, next category is graphic pens. And these pens are designed or were originally designed for graphic artists and um, the reason they're called graphic pens or the, the main use for using graphic pens is because you get different widths. So that 0.3 there is 0.3 of a millimeter and they go up to 1 or 1.2. Actually, I'm not quite sure how big they do get. That one is 0.5. I think I've got another one here of uh, there's another 0.5. I know that um, a, one of my colleagues uses a 0.01. So that means a tenth of a millimeter. Not, oh, no, that means a hundredth of a millimeter. Really? Um, 0.1 is, is a tenth of a millimeter. So 0.1 is very, very, very tiny. And, oh, I think she uses not, not 0 0.01, but 0 0.05. So she uses a 20th of a millimeter to get an extremely, extremely fine line. I don't think I've got an extremely, extremely fine line one here. I think the smallest is my 0.3. And it's quite difficult to tell the difference. So there's the 0.3 there. And there's the 0.5. So, yeah, you can actually tell the difference. So, they go up and down, and um, they give you a precision, a precision line. Um, again, in my dad's day, he used to use um, a special um, nib pen that had two bits of metal like that, and he used to widen and close um, the pen depending on how thick he wanted the line. So your graphic pens give you very, very uniform um, line length. No, sorry, line width. Um, I was just going to, to say how long does a pen last? And the, the answer to that is how long is a piece of string? Because, of course, it depends on... Um, how long you use it. I'm just looking at some of the other information on here. Um, this one says recap after use because one of the qualities of permanent ink, of waterproof ink, um, it is sometimes called Indian ink, is that it will dry on the tip and you won't be able to use it. Okay, so um, we, we keep those, those lids closed and I was just noticing this one says 18 hours cap off. Wow. So you can forget about putting the cap on that one for a while and it won't uh, be a problem. Um, so that is really interesting about that one. So I've got a, a little bit of a collection here of uh, obviously the art line, the Sharpie. Here's a different Sharpie. This one just says fine. So... Um, if you want to know the thickness of your line, you will get these graphic pens that absolutely tell you. Um, this one doesn't say waterproof. I suspect that it is as well, even though it doesn't say even permanent. So you can always test. Okay. Um, the last type of pencil pen that I'm going to show you before I give you a little bit more information on using them, is this one. Um, the, the manufacturer is called Uniball, or Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Pencil Company. Um, this one particularly says broad, so these are not in degrees of millimeter, um, but you can get broad and fine and medium and that sort of thing. And this one, 
unlike these graphic pens, let's see if you can see the difference there, you can see that this pen has got that metal tip with a tiny black um, tip there. And the tip of this one looks like it uh, looks like the ballpoint pen. And the reason for that is because it has a ball at the top of it, um, not this shaft of metal. And the liquid inside is much more fluid than the liquid that is in a ballpoint pen and it is absolutely beautiful to write with it just glides all over the page i absolutely love these pens now um i remember when my children were at university or at school and they needed to write, they were still writing their essays in tests especially, these pens were so much smoother to write with. They didn't have the pull of a ballpoint pen, um, which actually takes a lot more effort on your fingers. Now, there's another wonderful reason that I love these pens. And that is how you use them. So how you use most um, graphic pens, if not all graphic pens, I haven't actually met um, any others. When you have got that fine metal tip, you need to use these pens completely upright. Can you see that it's pointing to the camera? Um, I can tilt it very, very slightly but to get a clear line, it needs to be completely upright. As soon as you tilt it a bit, the line becomes quite scratchy and you certainly can't write like that. So you have to get used to holding the pen vertically to get your marks. It's not a, it's not a hardship but it does take some getting used to. And these beautiful, um, which are also waterproof and fade proof, these um, ball pens, and I remember when they first came out, before they were graphic pens, they came out um, in competition with ballpoint pens and in competition with um, fountain pens. These pens, because they've got a ball and that ball can be in touch with the paper all the time, you can write as you normally would and i can turn it well oh, there you go that's at about a 45 degree angle or less and i'm still getting some of those lovely lines there so um, i highly recommend this one the disadvantage you go through lots of ink so because of that free flowing ink um you go through lots of ink there is a, 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 a place there where you can see how much ink you've got left, that sort of thing. Most of these pens, or many of these pens, do come in other colours as well. Of course, I am talking about the traditional black, which is um, what most of us use. But I have students who have got beautiful coloured pens, and um, they will have similar characteristics to all these pens I'm telling um, you about. Um, okay, the next thing I'd like to tell you a little bit about is about how they behave on the paper. The paper I've been using now is the standard paper that I've used for most of my um, demonstrations with you. And it is just this cartridge drawing paper. And I don't know if you've noticed, when I put the water on, I'll see if I can get it to happen again. So I'm squeezing a whole big dollop of water there. It is soaking into this cartridge paper very, very quickly. You can see those spots there, and you can see a big solid blob that is soaked in there. So if you are going to wet your work, put color washes on, it's probably advisable for you to use a better quality 
paper, which I will demonstrate in a sec. So this will do your simple tones like that. Um, so that was the one with the outline pen. When you're drawing something and you just want to add a little bit of shadow. And you just quickly want that pen to bleed in. Okay, so it's very, very subtle. The paper is not very good for anything other than that. So, what is a better quality paper? Depending on the quality of the work you want to produce, if you want to do um, a lot of wash on it, then I would advise that you get some watercolour paper. Um, you can get smooth watercolour paper, and I'll tell you why smooth or rough makes a difference. So, um, in a sec, where did I put that pen? So here's some watercolor paper. You can see I tested it earlier. And if I put my little head daisy on there, and again, I just use my wet brush to, can you see how much more the pen is bleeding? Because the water is sitting on the top, It's much more characterful. So that is the nature of watercolour paper, that the water doesn't sink in straight away, which means there's more water to catch that ink. So something to remember. Um, I've got other bits and pieces of, of paper here, um, and I'm going to show you why right now. If you are going to use a very fine pen and you want to do some meticulous, detailed work, um, and as I mentioned before, I have a colleague who does magnificent um, pattern work. You can see quite a lot of this. Um, I guess you could, you, you know, Zentangle is one example, but there are many people who do the most exquisite drawings with a very fine pen. So this is a 0.3, so that's the finest one I've got here. And I've just drawn that pattern on a very smooth piece of paper. So the rougher your piece of paper, the less fine your work will look. So this is a slightly rougher piece of paper. And I don't know if you can see the difference don't know if I can zoom in any closer. Um, no, it's not letting me zoom in any closer, I'm afraid. But the rougher your paper, the, uh, the more textured the line is going to be, the smoother your paper, the more crisp your line is going to be. Now, you only really, really need to get into those differences when you become very interested in the fine, fine nature of these pens. Now, on the, on the um, watercolour paper, which is the roughest of all, I don't know if you can see, but the pen is actually skipping a little bit. It's not going into all the crevices and it's a bit jiggly. So even though I'm trying to do a smooth line, it's going in and out and in and out, probably a little bit fine um, and far away from the camera for you to be seeing. Um, I'm not even sure if I can... Ah, okay. There you go. Can you see that it hasn't really caught the page there? If I hold it that close to the camera, then we have a problem with focus. So your cartridge paper is beautiful to sketch on, but it has what we call a tooth. So this one isn't as fine as this one. So the line will be better there. The pen will travel more easily. and But the difference is not much. So... Um, the quality of your paper, how rough or smooth it is, you might find 
as you fall in love with pens, you might find that that is something that you will need to take into consideration. Okay, one of the questions that I put down in that email, and I hear that from lots of people who say, I'm not ready to draw with a pen because I can't draw or I can't draw well enough to um, draw with a pen. And the other question or comment that goes hand in hand with that, of course, is what happens if I make a mistake? I can't make a mistake with pen, um, so why would I use that? Or should I draw with pencil first so that I can get the pen right? And all of those sorts of things. In my experience, drawing with pen allows your head, your knowing brain, to leave you alone to just draw. There's almost a psychological feeling, and many other people have borne me out on this, of, well, I'm not going to be able to rub out, so I might as well, uh, I might as well just draw. So your brain says, I'm going to leave you just to draw, and if you make mistakes, it's just too bad. I warned you not to draw with a pen, so you're just going to have to draw. And what happens when you have got that freedom, see I'm drawing a nice head flower now, just making it up as I'm going along, you have a freedom of, I've just got to draw without worrying about, oh, if I make a mistake, I've got to rub it out, or I can't rub it out. And what happens is you actually start to enjoy the process much more than you think. The second comment I need to make about drawing with pen is that it is just a piece of paper. And as I've told you many, many, many times, just draw or just get drawing. This doesn't have to be a precious result. It just has to be you drawing. And drawing with a pen means you don't have to worry about it rubbing out. You can just doodle so there is no such thing as a mistake and it is also um, there was another reason I was going to say it's just a piece of paper you could oh it's uh, portable you don't have to sharpen it the pencil can't break all of those sorts of things okay what happens if you do make a mistake or you draw a line that you don't really like uh, and I know that one of my favorite life drawing poses I was drawing in pen and something went wrong and the foot was too long. You just draw again. So let's say I've put that, um, this funny thing on that flower that wasn't intentional and um, I don't know quite how to get rid of it. You can draw over it or that or that line went into the petal. As you start drawing shading over it or shading marks, those errors or whatever start to disappear and they become not errors but parts of the process that the artist, the drawer is going through to get their picture done. And there are many drawings that I've done, but many, many drawings that other people have done where you wouldn't even notice what they would consider mistakes because they've just gone over it or they've accepted what they've drawn and lived with it and the picture has changed because of it or they've taken that mistake and they've put something similar on the other side. But of course, that's just me doodling. What happens if I... Thanks, Bev. Our Zentangle challenge was done in ink and no eraser was fabulous, especially for patterning and Zentangles. So what happens if I'm drawing a, a face and let's say I put my eyes up there. Excellent. Glad you agree, Lois. Okay, so if you've seen uh, portrait demonstrations, I would have told you that the eyes are halfway and what happens if you launch into your portrait 
and you've done these almond eyes and you go, oh my goodness, I've forgotten what Karen's taught me. I've messed the whole thing up, etc., etc. Well, there are a couple of things you can do. You can just draw another line that's higher or you can draw another chin that is lower. So I'm correcting my chin and you're going to go, well, what about all these other lines? Actually doesn't matter. You just carry on drawing as if they are not there. And the viewer will accept it as just part of the process. Hello to you, Janice. Okay, so I'm making this guy up. And so you can see mistakes there. Just draw another line. So, um, and the other, the other half of this, this statement was, what happens if I'm not good enough? Good enough for who? So it's only your own expectation that says, I've got to be good enough. I've got to draw at a certain level with my pencil while I can still rub out and measure before I'll tackle pen. Why? It's not like you need to um, play a piano piece in a concert hall in front of an audience where you'll go, okay, I'm going to play that Bach piece before I've learned how to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Stars. So it's not precious. So yes, you are good enough. Just draw and just draw with pen. Now... One of the other things that people say about drawing with pen, I'm fiddling really nicely with this guy and I'm making his eyes a bit smaller so that I can't see all his pupils, but I'll give him some eyelashes to cover up where I made those big eyes. So you just muck about. You don't always muck about when you're drawing pen, with pen, but the, the, the way in which you think about it, your attitude of mucking about dare to stuff it up see where you come just draw again all of those things do come into it even if you're drawing a very precious piece hello doublet um ah what happens if uh, with pen and something else people ask is if you can't do shading um, so obviously with a pen you can't colour in as such, which is what you do with a pencil. Um, and a pencil you can, you know, shade smoothly and all of those things. If that's the case, you need to look at my video on mark making, because pen shading and mark making has a very, very traditional, fabulous history and it is relatively easy to put marks or to put shadow on. It's just that you're scared because these pens make such a big mark. So for this, uh, this funny gentleman that I've driven, uh, drawn, watch what happens when I put marks right over the marks that I've already drawn with my pen. And let's say I want to put shading across his ear because that's where it is. So the light's coming from there. I'm going to put, let's give him another eyebrow. I'm going to put shading right the way across that side, including over his eye. Stop at his nose. Have it come across like that. So can you see that I'm not having to colour in? And indeed there'll be some shadow across that eye as well. And if that's not dark enough, you can come in with more cross hatching. So that's just one example of a mark that you can make to add tone but this is just to show you that it is absolutely not impossible 
to add tone, even if um, you can't colour in. So I'm actually, as usual, getting very involved in this little this little sketch that I'm doing. So I'm going to put some in a different direction for his neck. about that so I hope that I've answered all your questions and allayed your fears of using pens um, if you have any other questions about pens please don't hesitate to ask if I don't know the answer I'll find it out for you so you're welcome to ask those questions um, in the comments bye bye keep drawing enjoy your pen work bye bye